as it is, is Wayne County Executive Warren Evans. He is here with us tonight, along with our My Week contributors, Nolan Finley of the Detroit News, Stephen Henderson of the Detroit Free Press. Gentlemen, it's good to see you. Warren, welcome back to My Week. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Glad to be back. All right. Now, we've had this debate about how we fund our local governments here on My Week, and this is something that Stephen is very passionate about and how he says we've got to kind of rehaul the whole system. And you seem to have stepped up to the plate and said, all right, let's do this. You're going around the state now in the next couple of months and talking to people in, in several cities and about how we should go about doing this. People will say, well, with the job that you have in Wayne County, where do you even have the time to step mm -hmm. out of the box and take this on? That may be a legitimate question, but I think it's one of those that that we have to look at. I mean, somebody has to take the initiative to try to go around and build some kind of consensus about what we ought to do. And it's got to be a statewide consensus and it's got to be bipartisan if it's ever going to work. One of the things that I found very quickly in Wayne County was, you know, we can figure out how to balance the budget. You know, we can manage much better than we were managed before. But at the end of the day, the dollars aren't there to do the infrastructure stuff, to do the road stuff, to have enough prosecutors to prosecute cases in Wayne County. Um, there's just not enough money in the budget to do the things that the public expects us to do and quite frankly that we think uh, we ought to do. And so that's that's just a problem. The, the formula, and I think it's a common problem wherever you go in the state, there may be some little nuanced differences, but in reality uh, the funding for local townships, cities, uh, in counties is not adequate to get the work done. All right, so what are we doing wrong? What are we doing wrong in Michigan that say maybe other states aren't? Well, I mean, we're we're at the bottom uh, in the country in terms of uh, the money that we're sending back to local communities. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it kind of originates with us, us, us being the global us, which are taxpayers throughout the state, uh, and we're getting uh, a significantly smaller share continually smaller share of that money coming back to us. Now, I mean, it's an extremely complicated subject and I am absolutely no expert. And so what we are trying to do is take those experts, the folks from Citizens Research Council and folks from MSU Extension, finance experts uh, who know, number one, how do we get to where we are? And number two, what are some of the potential solutions and what were the pitfalls that helped create a situation where those didn't work in the past. And so we're trying to build consensus uh, and trying to educate ourselves, certainly me, but you know, other local officials as to those things, what the problems are, what can we possibly do about it. Yeah, I mean, this is something that we'd love to see someone like the governor doing, going around the state, building consensus uh, for, for something like this. But, but what are you hearing from people in other parts of the state? I mean, generally, when we talk about these things here, we're talking about Detroit and Wayne County, Oakland and Macomb to some, some degree. Uh, but I would imagine you're hearing stories from people in other parts of the state that might sound pretty similar. Yeah, they do. And I think timing in, in a lot of things is everything. And I think the timing right now is, is a good one to revisit it as long as you're revisiting it openly to try to figure out, okay, what are solutions that benefit all of us, not, you know, uh, you know short-term grabs sure. uh, at things. And I mean, you know, when you see the economy improving and then you see that the revenue is not improving at all, it's kind of a shock to folks. Okay, wait, I understand when things are bad and we lose revenue, but when things are better, where's the additional revenue? And so I think it's but becoming how much, how much, critical. How much do, do, do pensions and other retiree costs drive this problem, not just in Wayne County, but in other parts of the state? I mean, I know if you go to, to, to places that people think of as wealthy and stable and look at their pension shortfalls, their, their uh, unfunded liabilities for health care, mm -hmm. th those, are, those are all off the charts. How much of the problem is that? It, it's sure a big part of the problem because obviously if we weren't paying, you know, the the um, catch up to yeah. get pensions where they should be right. or paying off unfunded liabilities in OPEP, there'd be more operating dollars in the budget sure. to provide services. So it's a big part of it to what extent. But is it, is it something you could stay ahead of no matter what changes are made in funding, no matter how many, how much additional resources you got? Some of these communities are paying 50 percent or more of their general fund budget or of their budget to pay for retiree health care and pensions. I don't know what your percentage is. I know you've brought it down, 
but that goes up all the time. You've got mm -hmm. suburban communities with work retiree workforces two and three times the size of their Current serving workforce, workforce yeah. and still have uh, provisions in place where people can go out in their 50s and retire and start collecting their full pension. You did yourself. And so how in the world can taxpayers ever stay ahead of that if we don't get the cost side of this fixed first? You know, obviously, the cost side has to be contained. And mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in Wayne County, we've made a concerted effort to start working on that. I mean, it, it's such a complex problem Till I think the only way to do it is to go around, educate ourselves, listen to what folks throughout the entire state are seeing, hearing, uh, and try to get together and deliberately th think through what are some of the ways, um, what are the options that we have, and what might we do to at least make it better. But it is a big ask to go out to taxpayers and say, <clears throat> look, we want more from you to fund an operation when you still have Wayne County commissioners who haven't, who have decided they're not going to sacrifice, they're going to collect full-time pay for part-time work, they're going to continue to get their health care and pension, pensions, and they're going to ask taxpayers to fund that? I mean, don't you have to fix your fundamental problems first, Warren? Sure, but I think the design here is not to go out and ask the, ask the taxpayers to pony up more. That's not what this is about. This is about how do we reallocate the funds that are currently here, and if there's got to be some more bleeding, and let's, let's, let's spread the bleeding out yeah. some more. This is no... Um, cover for uh, uh, the opportunity to ask the taxpayers for more. I mean, whether it's the jail or other things, I've been pretty adamant about. I think we've been beaten up enough, and I'm not looking for that, but I am looking for solutions, uh, reallocations of state resources, and if, in fact, we get to the end of that road uh, and there's need for additional dollars, then uh, I, I think the onus is on us in government to cut the costs and do the things so that if taxpayers sign on for anything else, they're not buying a pig and a poke. I, well, I absolutely agree. Well, well, talking about taxpayers signing on to something else, there's also that conversation that maybe more cities or, or townships, they should be having an income tax instead of, the, instead of the collection from the property tax. But we see in some of the larger cities like Detroit and like Flint who have had that, but they've still had financial problems. And a bunch of cities who have said, no, we're not going to do that. Right. Uh, and so, and I think their no is not necessarily that they're against a local income tax. They're against what they see is an overtaxed environment that they're in without getting benefit for local services out of it. And, and, and I would certainly have to agree with them. Yeah. I mean, part of what you're talking about here is that split between what the state keeps mm -hmm. uh, that it collects and what comes to, to, to local governments. And uh, I saw a chart a few weeks ago by the Michigan Municipal League that shows we are dead last uh, in the growth of that share that comes to local governments nationwide. And so uh, pensions or uh, OPEB or not, uh, we just aren't giving municipalities the, their fair share, even, of, of And if the, they need to the use part of that fair share to pay OPEB, right. then let them do it, but right. you're not giving them the fair share in the first place. I, 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 I do agree that there's an awful lot of work, you know, to be done there. Uh, the urgency for us is it's not getting any better. Mm -hmm. There's some economic improvements, but... The revenue sharing or whatever it is is not coming back. I mean, it's kind of interesting. You got, I'm starting to learn now. So, you know, statutory <laughs> revenue sharing, you got constitutional yeah. revenue sharing. Yeah. It's, it's odd that a county with nothing but constitutional officers and constitutional responsibilities gets not a penny in constitutional <laughs> revenue sharing. I mean, I, I don't get the logic. So mm. there's, it's a complex problem. I'm certainly not the, 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 the guy to solve it. Uh, but I didn't see anyone else coming forward saying, let's start pulling the resources together, talk through it. Uh, and we got a bunch of experts that are there with us who do this for a living. Um, but, but I think it's interesting that you're at least starting to have the conversations. And I'll be interested to hear what, um, what kind of feedback you get from other parts of the state after you finish this kind of tour of the state over the next couple of months. While we have you here, I want to talk a little bit or ask you about um, the jail project and where that fits into uh, what your plans are and where is fitting into this larger conversation of a soccer stadium and the plans that Dan Gilbert wants to have in bringing MLS to Detroit and specifically looking at that spot that Wayne County has. Well. We're still going down the path that we were going down before to try to, by the end of the summer, put out an RFP to finish the jail. I mean, for a number of internal reasons, we've got to get a jail and we've got to get one quickly. You know, the costs of maintaining and repairing 
the existing structures is crazy. It, it's, it's, it's killing us. Uh, we've had a couple discussions since the big press conference, you know, sort of thing with uh, um, those who wanted to build a stadium. And it's been real clear to them because they've regurgitated to me that, you know, they're going to try to get into the timeline that we have uh, and see if they can propose something that guarantees that the overage cost, the costs, the difference between what it would take for me to finish the jail uh, and the rest of it is covered and guaranteed by somebody. What's I mean, that number? What's uh, that number? I, I wish I could tell you, Nolan, but... You have a ballpark? Uh, I, I have a ballpark on finishing the jail. And Which I, is? Uh, ballpark 250. Where are you going to get that money? Well, we'll be able to bond and do that. You know, I mean, it's... Is 250 it, ahead of... Uh, 250 above a, what Above the 150 we've already, we've already yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we, we'll be able to bond and get that done. We, that's in our wheelhouse. We've looked at that. We're working through it. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to do that. Uh, the difference between that roughly 250 and what it would take to build another courthouse, another juvenile detention facility, is, and another jail is significantly higher than that. I don't know what those numbers are, and I'm not a math major, but building three structures have to be more. is going to be significantly more. And all I'm saying is I've got a finite number that lease will be ironed out pretty soon in terms of what Wayne County taxpayers will have to pay to finish this jail. Anything over that that's has got to be somebody's It sounds issue. like hundreds. It could be hundreds of millions, mm -hmm. and you would be expecting then Gores and Gilbert to pay for that, or the, who would pay for that that overage? I, mean, I, I really don't care who they get to pay for it. Uh, it won't be Wayne County taxpayers. Do you get any sense they're willing to go that deep to get this site? Uh, I, I do, um, but... It's always easy, as you know, for someone to philosophically say, we can pick up the difference until you've actually <clears> figured out exactly what the cost of the difference is. I don't know what that's going to mm -hmm. be, but I know it would be uh, ridiculous in my mind for me to slow down our process while that goes on. You know, we've had a, a jail sitting there partially finished for three years. I mean, at some point, it's not going to be salvageable. You know, there are a number of things going on here that don't, allow me to, in good conscience, slow down and wait for them to catch up. We've been working on this jail for 15 months. They've known we were working on it for 15 months uh, and haven't been a part of the discussion significantly for 15 months. If they can come in, in the next few months and work wonders, I'll be as happy as anybody. All right. Wayne County Executive Warren Evans, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Kristen.